G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. Welcome to the workshop and welcome to part four of the plate rack build. In the last videos leading up to this, I shared with you how I keep my chisel sharp, how I cut tenons, and how I cut mortises. And I know there's a lot of different ways to do all three of those, but they're the styles that suit me best. So then I was going to go ahead and cut the mortises and the tenons for this plate rack, and then put it all together. But I thought, now what I'll do, I'll actually show you me doing it, because it's all very fine, to show you techniques to no end, if you like. It's like some people you see, they're cutting dovetails and they can do it really, really fast. But if it's not for a purpose, it really doesn't have as much impact as when you're actually doing a job. So I will cut the mortises in the cheeks of this plate rack, and I'll also cut the tenons on the shelves, but at least you get an understanding of how I approach these particular tasks in woodwork. So let's get on with it. What I've done is marked out on this side and started to mark it with a knife and a chisel so I know where I'm going to cut. But I thought I'd leave it there and share with you the process so then you can come with me step by step. First thing I have to do is these lines here, I've got to transfer them around to the other side. And the reason for that is because I'm doing through mortises, I want to approach the cut from both sides and hopefully end up somewhere in the middle. And that way, if there's any tear out or nasty bits of grain, we're not gonna see it. Where if I did a mortise all the way through, starting at this edge and coming out this face, I'd most likely get breakout at some point. So if we go halfway on this side, halfway on that side, then it's gonna look a lot cleaner. So it's important that you're accurate. And as I said at the end of the part three of this, I think, the challenge I have is I don't have any flat surfaces except for this one at the back. So all my reference points are gonna come from this edge here. Now it's important that that edge is square to both faces. which it is. The reason for that is if I had a slight angle and, where's the marking gauge? And I take a marking gauge from here, if it was angled this way, I'm gonna get a mark here, and then when I transfer it over, the mark's gonna be further in. So then I'd end up with two openings for the mortise, if you like, which isn't a complete disaster. You can just make that mortise a little bit bigger and then you'll cut the tenons to suit. But if you can start off square, it definitely makes life a lot easier. So, let's go, just carry these along. I bring them from this point here and just mark on the other side. Then get a really nice accurate square. Place it, my pencil onto the line I've drawn and then slide my square up to that pencil mark and draw across. In fact, I'll need a longer square for that one. Place my pencil on that pencil mark, slide my square up to it, mark the line, and again on this top one, what I actually did was got the pencil lines there, brought them over to the edge, transferred them along there. Now I'm marking this face, putting my square on, putting my pencil actually on that pencil mark, 
move my square up. That way I know I'm getting the right measurement. A lot of times people will move their square up to the mark, then put their pencil and they're then a lead width away from where they should be and they'll end up with a bigger um, hole, if you like. So put the pencil on the mark, slide the square up. And I've just recently changed over to brass squares and I cannot believe the difference it makes. After using steel squares for the best part of 30 years, I was put onto these by actually the chap that makes them, Colin Clinton of uh, Australian Quality Tools. And they are absolutely superb. They are so nice to use. What he told me was if I use a steel blade on a steel square, I can actually knock this out of square. But, interesting fact, if I use a brass square with a steel knife, the brass will actually wear the knife away, not the other way around. So, I don't know how it works, but I'll tell you, if you ever get the opportunity to invest in some of um, Colin's tools, they are absolutely a joy to use. In fact, we gave, I think, one of these away um, a few giveaways ago in the Woodworking Mastercar C workshop drawer. And uh, I don't know, who knows, next year we might have a couple of other tools to give away. But that's it. I'm converted. Colin, mate, they're brilliant. All right. Now, put this one away. It's always nice when you find something new that works and is a joy to use. Okay, now, marking gauge. I'm going to set the depth that I have here, that I've already marked on this side, and then just simply transfer it over onto the other side. Same with the bottom ones. Transfer it over and do that to all of them. Where I've drawn those lines, I'm just going to mark with a marking knife. That's the other thing you get. You don't get that grinding sound when you run a blade over one of these. Absolutely delightful. Now you can see I've got the knife cuts in there. Let's go outline this a little bit. Now the only reason I've done that is because my eyesight's not as good as it used to be and therefore if I've got a nice defined line there I can make sure my chisel 
goes between the two lines. Now, if you remember when I did the mortise video, I showed you different types of mortises. This one is quite strange because it is a lot wider than it is deep. And it works in exactly the same way, only just don't rush it. So we'll clamp this down and we will start doing this one here. Let's move this stuff out of the way. Don't you chew that. Right? Don't you chew it. Scallyway. Okay. Got a bench clamp in. Now, when you're going to do tenons, see if you can do them the width of the chisel. Sometimes I don't like doing that, other times I don't mind doing it. This is one time where I know that a one inch chisel is going to give me a nice one inch mortise. And if I do go over, if I do make a bit of a mess of it, it doesn't really matter because what I've done, instead of going the full width of the timber for the shelf, I've cut it down so the tenons that I make to go in these mortises are going to have shoulders on them. So if we do make a bit of a botch up of it, it's okay, we can fix it up when we come to doing the tenons. But it's not something you should aspire to, you should try and get it right first time. Okay. Now what about the first chop? I come in a little bit from that line with the bevel of the chisel facing the direction I'm going. So I'm going to be going from on my bench from left to right but from your screen from right to left. Don't come in hard to start with because you'll botch it. Now come back into where you started. Go down a little bit harder this time. Move along. You're going to have to give it two or three clouts. Now where I'm right on that line, I'm going to not have the bevel on that line. I'm turning it around because I want it to come straight down to give me a nice clean cut. Whereas if I go this way, it's going to slide back a bit. Make sure the chisel's perpendicular, straight up and down. Get a smaller chisel and just get that waist out. And back in and you'll notice I've got my leather strop right here in the vise. So after half a dozen chops, 12 chops, it doesn't really matter. Just get your chisel and give it a couple of light rubs on the strop, then you're back in business. If we measure that, that's well over halfway through. Now I feel quite confident of turning it over and approach it from this side. Pull that in. And this is why it's so important to have those marks set out identical on both sides. Because if I was a little bit out, on this side and I punch through, then we're going to be a little bit shy on one side and a little bit shy on the other side. And uh, it doesn't make for good work, woodworking practice. If 
close to the edge. Now I'm coming right up on the edge and we should go through as we did. We'll do the same to this one. And around when we come right to that line. Clean out a bit of waste. Well, there we go. And there we have two very acceptable mortises with a minimum of fuss. Do this one now. We're well on the way. Just clean up any edges if there's any Aggie bits left in there. And there you have it. All the mortise is cut. We've still got a couple more to do, but the plate rack supports that go at the back, I'm not going to cut those until I've fitted the shelves. And also I want to do a blind mortise down here, which I want to put a little carving rail on. And that's where we'll leave it right now. And in part five, we'll finish cutting the tenons, the back rails, do any shaping we have to do, and it's really starting to come together. So until we meet again in the shed, remember to keep it sharp, but more importantly, keep it safe, be nice to each other, enjoy your woodwork, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.